Hello YouTube. Uh, today I wanted to bring you guys a quick video on uh, solving FRQ number 3 on the AP Physics E Mechanics exam um, from this year 2016. So uh, one thing to note about uh, this video is that as of the date of this production, College Board has not released the official solutions guide. So um, Anything that you see in this video may not end up earning you the total amount of points, but it should still get you a general idea of the solutions. Um, anyways, let's get into it. So this question talked about a circular platform which had a uniform rod of length D, um, which has one end fixed to the central axis of the circular platform. And inside that rod, there's basically a spring and attached to uh, one end of the spring is a block. So um, at equilibrium position, the spring is stretched by a distance of d over 2, as shown in the figure. And then this platform actually starts rotating with a constant angular speed of omega. And the spring stretches by a distance of d over 2. So now in, this, in figure 2, you can see that the block is now touching the exterior of this circular platform. Um, so, in the tables uh, shown below, they give you the moment of inertia of the rod and platform, which will be, which will be used in the uh, further calculations for this question. So, the first part was to solve for the spring constant. Now, the spring constant can actually be found by equating the force of the spring and the centrif equal to the centrifugal force um, experienced by the block. So, uh, as this circular platform starts rotating, the block is going to want to be thrown outwards by the centrifugal force. However, the spring force will keep it um, in its equilibrium position. So that's how you know those two are equal. Anyway, so so basically force, spring, uh, Kx, Hooke's Law, we know this. So Kx will be equal to m times omega squared. Omega is the constant angular speed, which is given in this question. Uh, times r, the radius. So r, we can see, is actually 2d, because if you notice, the the small rod that the spring is attached to is a distance of d, and the spring itself is now stretched a distance of d, so that becomes 2d for the radius for the block, so that uh, becomes our radius now, and x for the spring, uh, the distance it's stretched from equilibrium is d over 2, because uh, note that it started at a distance of d over 2. So solving this, we get k equals 4 m omega squared. Uh, moving on, we have the moment of inertia and angular momentum portions of this question. So we want to determine the rotational inertia of the block. Now, um, we see this given table, which will help us finding the total moment of inertia of the entire system. So for the block, it's simply m r squared. And here the r is again 2d, as shown in figure 1, for the block, uh, once it starts rotating. So um, the moment of inertia of the block is simply 4 times d squared times the mass, which is m in this case. So the total moment of inertia will be the sum of all of the moment of inertias, uh, substituting in the values for the uh, moment of inertias for the rod, the platform, um, including the masses m, the mass of the rod is 3m and the mass of the platform is 5m. We get this equation and basically simplifying it further, uh, we arrive at our final solution of the total moment of inertia of the system is 15 times the mass, uh, m times d squared. Um, now the second part c, part c asks you to find the angular momentum of the entire system and this is simply the uh, system's uh, moment of inertia as a whole times its angular velocity squared. We know this from our equation, um, angular momentum equals moment of inertia times uh, angular velocity squared. So this becomes simply 15 md squared times omega squared. The total moment of inertia, uh, once again, coming from our previous calculation. In part d, uh, we're going to want to find the distance x that the spring stretches once the rod reaches the position 3. So in this figure, basically the rod center lines up with the center of the circular platform. And uh, we basically, we can let r be the radius of the block. 
Okay, so R for the radius of the block is now X plus D because uh, the spring's equilibrium distance was D over 2 and half of this rod is D over 2. So D over 2 uh, times 2 basically is D. So D plus X becomes the radius of the block. From uh, part A, we know that the spring constant is 4M omega squared. So we can once again set the centrifugal force equal to the spring force and just substituting in new values for the R we get M times the quantity D plus X times omega squared equals 4 M omega squared X uh, just expanding the left side of the equation we get M D omega squared plus M times X times omega squared equals 4 M omega squared X and now we can notice that uh, we can divide both sides of the equation by m times omega squared, uh, as you can see right there. So we basically get d, which is the distance that the spring is stretched as the rod center reach, uh, lines up with the center of the platform is 3x. So x is equal to d over 3, uh, which is our solution for part d. So parts E and F are basically conceptual questions involving the previous description as the rod moves towards the center, as the rod center moves towards the center of the platform, excuse me. So it's asking if the angular momentum of the entire system increases, decreases, or stays the same. Well, as the rod moves towards the center, the radius for the rod and the block decrease, which means that the total moment of inertia for the system is decreasing. Now, the key point to notice in this part is that the same constant angular speed, omega, is maintained by the motor driving it. Um, by conservation of uh, angular momentum, the omega should have gone up as the moment of inertia goes down from our equation, uh, angular momentum equals I omega. But um, because it didn't go down, that means that the angular momentum decreased. And in order to keep the system rotating with the constant angular speed, the motor is actually doing negative work in this case because it is slowing the system down as its moment of inertia goes down uh, to keep it at the same angular uh, angular speed because the angular speed should have gone up by conservation momentum. So the motor is actually doing negative work on the system to slow it down to keep it at that same speed. Um, part G was very simple. We just had to draw uh, the acceleration of the block and the acceleration will be radial and pointed to the center. Anyways, that's all for this question. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, leave any questions you have or comments in the comment section, and I will get you. I will see you guys in a later video. Peace.